All right. Welcome, everybody, to our first episode of Study in Slovakia. Believe it or not, it's a show about studying in Slovakia. Ooh. My name is Peter, and this is going to be my interviewee, Roy. And Study in Slovakia, it's sponsored by the website studyinslovakia.sk. They are a large recruiter here who recruits medical students, engineering students, and all sorts of other students, and they can help you with paperwork, credits, foreign police, and anything else that you need. So, if you do decide to study in Slovakia, I just want to let you know that First Lady Melania Trump isn't here. She's actually from Slovenia. Welcome back to the show, guys. Study in Slovakia. I'm very, very excited, and are you ready for some crazy, hard, intense questions? For FBI. sure. FBI. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hard question number one. Tell us, tell me a little bit about yourself, Roy. Who are you? So, I'm an, uh, I'm an Indian uh, student studying Bachelors of Mechanical Engineering in uh, Slovakia mm -hmm. and Technical University of Košice. Uh, I'm currently in the third year, like the final year of graduation. Okay. And, uh, like, I have been a part of Erasmus Students Network, uh, being the National Partnership Manager. I've been Cultural Coordinator for Human Rights League and Marginal. And also a big part of uh, the organization we are opening with Mr. Zavaski, uh, that is International Student Organization for Technical University. So, so that's pretty much. one can say that you're clearly not doing anything <laughs> <at all. laughs> You're just slacking pretty much. <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> no, I, I, well, like when I got to meet you, I'm very impressed with your background. Like, there's so much that you've been doing here. So, like, with that, the first question I want to ask you is the first major question is, how uh, did you uh, decide to come here from India? So basically, like uh, after, uh, like I, before I passed my uh, final, uh, you know, high school examination, uh, we had several choices, like. Uh, because my plan was to go abroad to study, so I applied to United States, to UK, to Canada, several other countries which generally Indians apply to. Mm -hmm. I also applied to Slovakia, uh, but uh, the thing is like uh, there were many suitable things for Slovakia. I got offer letters from many places, but Slovakia is the world's highest uh, per capita producer for automobile. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so I was like from the very beginning interested to study here. Then it was like I saw that the university has very high research output. So I was like I can get a hands-on uh, research experience. At the same time, it was mechanical engineering, but in three years, a graduation, which in most of the Western countries is four years. Mm. So it was like save of time, save of money. And at the same time, you know, it's in the core Schengen area, a central European country, so I'll be well connected with the industries, with the research and everything. So that was like my major choice to come to Slovakia. Well, a follow-up question on that. So like looking around the prices of school, like how did Slovakia compare to like United States and other places around <laughs> yeah, the world? Yeah, basically you can't even compare that because I mean like in the United States you go, uh, I remember the uh, universities I had offer letter from were like, even after scholarship was like $20,000 a year, maybe mm -hmm. $25,000, $28,000, UK, Canada, all is more or less the same. And in Slovakia, if you compare it, it's nothing because it's like just 3,500 that okay. we pay. So it's even lesser than many of the universities in uh, India. Uh, but you see the quality of education we get is like really, you know, cutting edge. Okay, so, <laughs> man, you're t talk about being advertisement for Slovakia. <laughs> Yes, but okay, so with that, so you made the decision to uh, come to Slovakia. So let's focus like more on your first year here. Like, how did you feel coming to Slovakia? I'm sure like it was a culture shock. So how did you feel and like what are the differences between like Slovakia and India? Like the, uh, you know, when I first came over here, it was my first time in Europe as well. Yeah. So I remember Peter, Mr. Peter, he came to receive me in the airport and I was like, everything is so nice and, you know, so calm and everything. It's totally a different scenario. And I liked it here. I started exploring the city, the places and everything because we had some uh, gap. I was the first student to arrive in that year. Mm -hmm. So I had some like almost one month to uh, go around places, explore the places, explore the university, speak to the professors in advance. And uh, there were a lot of differences, obviously. First was food. You yeah. know, because, because I mean, like in India, we are always like spiced up with everything. Yes, yes. And uh, in Slovakia, it's like 
you uh, most of the food you get is like western non spiced so okay food was a thing but i uh, slowly uh, learned to cook because cooking is very important once you come abroad other than that uh, also the education system is a bit different because generally when we are in our country we have just one examination mm -hmm. you pass or you fail so you when you fail you fail for the entire year but over here we have three attempts so you can even improve the marks what amazing part i liked about the system was this thing that uh, you know you have a pass at 51% yeah but uh, it's more important that you pass and understand the subject rather than you know passing just at 34% and then you don't understand anything of the subject the professors try to just focus that you understand the subject what uh, so you can dive into like what is the system here like for engineering compared to like back at home i know you mentioned the three attempts but like uh, lectures, study style, like what was that like for you? Yeah, uh, so basically, uh, see the classes or these things are pretty common because uh, you will be having similar classes in India, you're having classes over here. One thing is very different, that is the first year, which is an Indian system, you have pure uh, like recap of the studies you did in your high school, yeah. which is not over here. When you come over here, it is expected that you have studied properly in your high school and then you start. That's why you don't do the basic year of one year. So it is quite advanced. Uh. So uh, it wasn't a problem to cope up because my high school was pretty good. So uh, that was a thing. And other than that, the examinations have several dates. That's really good. It's not like you are sick on the day of examination and you are like you messed up your exam. No, you have like six weeks. You can choose any date you want. You go and write, you pass the subject. And the best part is after you write your exam, the professor individual is going to sit with you is going to mm. ask why did you write it you know so you have to explain each and everything it's not you just write it or copy from somewhere and you pass off it's not possible like that you need to explain everything oh well, I, mean, I guess that's pretty intense they hold you really accountable then so uh, it's like if you're interested in the subject it's uh, like you will enjoy it yeah if you're not interested then obviously you don't have a way out <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, everybody has their reasons of why they would do engineering or different stuff. So I guess at the end of the day, it's about motivation. So you've been here for three years. So, uh, and everybody, obviously everybody who comes here, especially from so far away, uh, it's adjustment. Like, how are you, how are you able to thrive? Uh, it's like, uh, obviously, you need, first of all, from the very beginning of when you're graduating from your high school, you need a motivation that you want to come abroad to study. Then you need to be, you know, mentally prepared that, you know, you are out of your comfort zone. Because generally, when we are in our home countries, we have we are in our comfort zone. Our parents are around us, and everything is very easy to do. But when you come out, one good thing is no one is going to check on you, and one bad thing is this thing that you know no one checks on you, so you don't have any control. <laughs> you go every day to party, no one will correct you. Okay, but it's your duty to realize it's, uh, that you came to study, to get the degree, to you know do uh, work or do the job. So it's your part that you utilize as much as possible. Also, one more uh, good thing about here is that the time of class, like, you know, the um, hours of class is quite less. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of free time during weekends or during uh, the day that you can use to do something else productive. So everybody has their own challenges and struggles here. What was your biggest challenge here? What was the, uh, your biggest obstacle your three years here? Okay, uh, so if you ask me, the biggest obstacle was uh, yeah, from the very beginning to get out of my comfort zone being with Indians and mixing with international and Slovaks. That mm. was the biggest obstacle I had to overcome. Because, you know, uh, like uh, generally I'm always with Indians or, you know, with the friends because it's obviously a comfort zone. But I didn't come here to be always with Indians and my community people. So yeah. I need to get out. And that was the biggest obstacle because let's say if I'm going uh, to someone to approach, you know, for a friendship or just to hang out, I didn't know how to approach because uh, I was from the uh, from my childhood I was in India or how to speak to them or things like this or what to say in order you know just to hang out with them but I slowly started uh, hanging out I slowly started speaking to people more and more and more it just got slowly used to it and it's just fun okay so we talked about now uncomfortable but now let's do kind of the semi opposite what did you find most surprising living here in Slovakia so the most surprising part about here is the people. <laughs> okay. Are the people. So like what's, sure. what's surprising about Slovak people? Uh, Slovak people, uh, especially in this part of uh, Slovakia, Košice, like it's the eastern mm -hmm. part. So the surprising part is this thing that people are really encouraging. And that's mm. really very surprising for me because if I do little of little things also, no, 
people are encouraging it, which I don't expect and I never, uh, you know, expected that thing. Just for example, I made a video one day explaining that I was traveling in Koshitse and how am I going to different places. W uh, one of my friends came and uh, he was like, uh, wow, that's so nice. You are doing, you're promoting our city and that's really so nice. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that is not something to appreciate, you know, but it feels good if someone does that. <laughs> so that's the thing. Let's now talk about because uh, you start off the interview with all the different things that you uh, are doing here. So tell me a little bit about, because uh, I remember you were working with Erasmus. So tell me a little bit about the program that you're doing here. So basically, uh, there's a, a exchange program in Europe that we know, uh, Erasmus exchange program. So when these Erasmus students go to some city, there is an organization called Erasmus Students Network who mm -hmm. take care of these students. You know, their uh, social life, their stay, everything. Other than the academics, everything else is taken care of by them. So every city uh, mostly has this ESN. So I, so when I came first to Koshitse, I saw that ESN was the strongest organization in Koshitse. Mm -hmm. Any party I'm going, any event I'm going, it's like organized by ESN. Other people are like, when are the ESNers coming? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm crazy to join it. So within one semester, I joined it. And I saw that there is a lot of scope and people are encouraging, you know, it's like they want to make friends, more and more international friends. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it's like uh, the exchange students just stay for six months and then you have again. So it's like your network basically increases. So after one month, uh, like a uh, first semester, I got elected as the cultural uh, cultural coordinator where I was uh, organizing events for the students, mm -hmm. like nation to nation and different type of events. Then after that, I got elected as the partnership manager for Koshitse, uh, the city. And I created several partnerships because uh, we have a card based on which you can get discounts if you're an Erasmus student or an ESNR. And then this semester I got uh, elected as the national partnership manager. So currently for the entire Slovakia, all the Erasmus students for all the uh, universities, I'll be taking care for the discounts with the international uh, companies to collaborate with them. How do you time-wise balance all those different things that you're doing? It's like, uh, you know, to be honest, when I was like uh, first semester over here, uh, I saw that uh, I go to school, I come mm -hmm. back, and then I used to follow a guy from MIT, you know, Massachusetts yes, Institute yes, of Technology. Yes. Yeah. So I used to follow him, and we, you know, we have this concept in our brain that MIT people are the smartest, you know. Yeah. So he used to make daily vlogs, and I saw what is difference between them and us. They also have like 24 hours in a day. They also have eight to nine hours of class, or maybe six hours of class. So what is making them so smart and us not? So I saw that there is a lot of time that I'm uselessly wasting just hanging around or you know, just on internet, watching videos or something like this, playing games. That is the part I'm just wasting. And that is the part they're using for the productive part. Mm -hmm. So uh, then I started pointing out the time that, okay, this much two hours I have free, this much three hours I have free. Like that I started pointing out and that's how I manage. And we have enough time <laughs> for everything. You're right, 24 hours in a day, you have to put your pants one leg <laughs> at a time. It yeah. is true, it just depends on how you use things. Uh, why should somebody study in Slovakia? Because of the opportunities and the scope in short and simple because there's a lot of scope, there's a lot of opportunities and the economy of the country is uh, very stable. Uh, so if you're looking for jobs, if you're looking for uh, setting up a business, if you're looking for doing something creative, there is scope over here. Mm. So that is the reason why you should come over here because obviously end of the day you're getting a degree. Okay, but after degree, what do you plan to do? So it's really good after degree, the opportunities. Obviously, degree is really good. The uh, student life experience is really good. Okay, but after that, you have a good scope over here. What would you say to like a young uh, Indian student uh, about studying abroad? I would say that, uh, you know, try to come uh, as young as possible. I came uh, abroad when I was 17 and a half, almost 18. <laughs> so, yeah. As Kid. Early, <laughs> kind of, yes. So, uh, as early as possible, because once you get out of your comfort zone of your parents and your family, you know, you will learn what is life because you have to, you know, understand your own finances. You have to plan your own things because neither your parents are watching you, no one is watching you. So, you might drown, you might go up. So, you will learn to live life on your own self. So, just start uh, planning to come abroad and this is a country which is very friendly which will keep you in such a way that you know you don't feel any harshness of the city the city is so safe so you know that's why uh, I would suggest that start planning to come abroad and start getting self-dependent more thank you guys for watching and remember uh, to check out more episodes and if you need help with paperwork 
anything with Slovakia, check out the website Slovakia, studyinslovakia.sk. So my name is Peter. Thank you guys and take care.